So often, just the toxic, distorting messages are focused on around our youth. And sometimes we slip into that too, that we're trying so hard to combat those that in our teaching with our children, we just focus on why those messages are wrong, but don't emphasize enough, really, what does healthy sexuality look like? What does that entail? What does that involve? How do we prepare for that? How does that look differently? How do we recognize it? And, you know, when you asked um, the question of, you know, how how are these different? The first word that came into mind was one of respect, that healthy sexuality is based upon respect. It's based upon honesty and trust and all of those relational emotional pieces that a lot of our youth don't ever have that discussed with them. And so I think that's where we as parents, especially in the home, and ideally if we have a, a positive marriage relationship that can model that respect and trust, um, it provides a, a great contrast to what they see in the world around them and in the media messages and television shows and, and websites and, and, and in the extreme in pornography where those things are absolutely censored. And I use that word censored deliberately. Those images and those um, films or websites are really um, void of tenderness, love, honesty, respect for another person, and holding the body in high regard, our own as well as someone else's. So I think really using keywords and descriptors to help young people understand how this is different and how to recognize it. You know, is it uplifting? When you see an image, does it, does it feel um, depressing or confusing or... Um, and what, how, how easy for a parent just to simply ask that question. Something happens, uh, they're watching TV or a movie, and, you know, when we were watching that, how did that make you feel? And, then, and let the light of Christ touch their hearts, and, and what a great conversation to have as a family. But, but the overall tone I hear you saying is that, yes, there, there perhaps is a time and place to focus on the dangers of sin uh, and, and to warn about Satan and, and how he's trying to attack us. But instead of focusing on the darkness, perhaps we need to focus on the light. We need to focus on the truth that the gospel brings us, especially around these uh, subjects with respect and with intimacy, with relationships. And as we focus on the light, maybe that's our, our best effort, our, our best weapon to help prepare and, and protect our children. Yeah, it, it, it's a channeling idea. It's about in the right direction. It's not about you know, it, 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 yes or no, it's about in that right direction and helping them understand the reason why inappropriate sexual media and pornography, why does it have temptation? Why is there attraction? Why is there interest? It's because it is that distortion. It's the grand counterfeit. Right. And so you're responding to natural and appropriate sexual cues and natural and appropriate sexual attraction and curiosity, but it's just distorted for very different means and purposes. So they can make the distinction between, oh, my attraction to that, my response to that, that's not what's wrong here. It's these messages and the inappropriate expression that it's gonna really distort and counterfeit. Oh, but my attractions and my interests and my desires, they have a proper expression. And I just need to channel it in that type of direction. They can start to make a distinction and they don't see themselves. And then hopefully have that ability to then partner in marriage with someone who shares that same healthy sexuality attitudes where they can now discuss, they can share, they can have that as part of their relationship. That's really important to help them distinguish because we talk about pornography like it's out there. But the experience for young people is also in here. They're trying to make sense of themselves of why do I feel, and why did I click on that? And why did I want to, and why do I respond to that, the, the, that way? And appreciate, they, they're trying to make sense as much about themselves as they are about what is out there. And right. to help them make those distinctions and, and, and understandings of that uh, is, right. is, is, is critical.
They have something beautiful and sacred inside them. And it's not bad per se. There's inappropriate expressions of it. But to understand that it's beautiful and good and it's meant to be special and enjoyed within the proper relationship so they don't get confused where they, I, I loved your analogy of the finish line or, you know, it's, it's almost as if we teach our children, you know, watch out for sex. Don't do it. It's bad. It's terrible, disgusting. So save it for someone you love <laughs> when you get married. And, and how confusing can that be for children? Yeah. Uh, very, very powerful. And unfortunately, it continues to be confusing for adults. So when we talked about right. adults doing, working with their own understandings and attitudes, many of us are carrying that kind of conditioning or attitudes. And that's what we're having to come to terms with as now we try to teach the next generation. I mean, this, is, this has been a process that's been going on for a number of generations. So it's not like we've got a generation that are, hey, we had this great and now we just have to deal with the next one coming. Eh, we maybe have internalized some of these same types of understandings. Some, right. Maybe we struggle. Maybe there's parts of our own marital intimacy that we think of as wrong or, or dirty. Or, and have we, are we able as a couple to talk about that? As counselors, we can tell you it's amazing how many couples can talk about everything under the sun, but they still do the mind reading when it comes to their own marital sexual relationship. They still struggle to talk about that, to be open. So that's a big part of how do we see it? How do we approach it? If we're gonna help our young people appreciate it. If we still are wrestling ourselves with whether or not it's wrong and dirty and sinful, it's really hard to teach young people to have a positive, healthy, looking forward, anticipating uh, view towards marital sexuality. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pick up and see uh, that in our tone.